The Paper Mario franchise had a very strong start, but let's just say there is a reason why a lot of fans are not very satisfied with how the series has evolved. Let me show you the current status of the franchise and what might be in the future for it. But before we get into that, give me just a second to defeat this bad guy. Ok, yeah, I select the hammer. Ok, I pressed on car ready, so get ready to face your doom. Oh, I have to press and hold to paint the car? Sure. Ok, I press on done painting. Hanging their body, almost done. Next, I have to slide the car upward to- God, I just wanna do a simple attack! Paper Mario was released for the Nintendo 64 and became an instant classic, and for good reason. The turn-based RPG genre can be hard to get into and was not as popular at the time. A good way to increase exposure was to make a well-known character like Mario the protagonist, but they also had to make a lot of changes to the turn-based RPG formula to make it more appealing to a broader audience, which we'll go through later on. The first sequel to the series, and regarded by a lot as the best game in the franchise, is Paper Mario the Thousand Year Door for the GameCube. This game expanded upon the first one, without taking away anything of what people loved about the original. Unfortunately, the continuation of the franchise wasn't as well received, being Super Paper Mario for the Wii a very different game with no turn-based combat and more of a focus on platforming, and Paper Mario's sticker star for the 3DS making a lot of changes to the formula that didn't stick well with the fans. Get it? Because it's called Sticker Star? Do you get it? If we want to consider what would be best for a new game in the Paper Mario franchise, we have to take a hard look at the last game in the series, Paper Mario Color Splash. The plot on this title is that the source of color has been stolen, so a lot of spots and people around the world have lost their shade. This justifies the inclusion of the main new game mechanic, paint. On this new adventure, you will find a lot of ink that can be used in combination with your hammer to paint back the world, which I find very creative and even rewarding to return a place to its former glory. Another important change is the use of cards. Instead of just using regular attacks, any action that Mario takes during combat is done by a card, which must be painted with the same ink you find lying around. At first glance, this entry definitely feels like a Paper Mario game. Colorful graphics, entertaining humor, wacky characters, and simple turn-based combat. But there is a lot more than meets the eye. I think my main complaint about this game can be divided between implemented mechanics and missing additions. Let's start with the first one. My first and main issue I have is with the combat. It's so damn s as I showed in the beginning of the video, it takes ages to do a simple attack. There is a reason why a lot of turn-based RPGs have a feature to allow automatic combat on simple mouths. Repetition can get boring, and it gets boring even faster if each action takes this long. Even the button presses you have to do when performing an attack need to be done several times. I like that attacks require these prompts to make combat more involved, but most attacks shouldn't take this many button presses. To make combat faster, any confirmation signs must be removed. And even though I like that you have to use the ink you gather to attack, the process of manually painting each card adds one more step. It should be done automatically once you select a card. You can actually buy cards that come pre-painted, but this skips the need to use your own ink, which I like since it gives more purpose to this resource. My second point is also about the combat. The cards used are completely disposed after each attack. You have to find them around the world or buy them. This not only makes your user interface a mess of cards in which it's hard to find the one you're looking for, but it also feels like your character doesn't really get stronger, you just find better cards lying around. If they want to keep the card theme and the mechanic of painting them, that's fine, but make it so that every new card you get is unique and doesn't explode into a thousand pieces every time you use it. That way, it will feel more like a new weapon or spell you acquire. Thirdly, there is something I really dislike about how bosses are done. Instead of them being just a stronger enemy made to test your skills, every boss literally can't be damaged unless you use a specific attack. There is something called thing cards that are mostly real life items that do a lot of damage. You can use these cards whenever, but every time you fight a boss you must use a specific thing card before you can do any damage to it. I don't really understand the decision at all. It's not like it's a puzzle to figure out how to defeat the boss. You just use the thing card you were told by an NPC or try the ones you got until you find the one required. This can cause situations like when I went against a boss without having the obligatory thing card, so I just took a beating while he was completely immune until I died. Not frustrating at all! Now let's jump into missing additions. The first and most missed addition that was staple to the franchise was Companions. In this game you just play with Mario and that's it, but in other entries you slowly gather a party of colorful characters that you can swap around, each with their own unique skills. This is an awesome feature since it not only makes combat more varied being abilities of each companion different, but these skills could even be used to help you progress in the world outside of combat. I'm not sure if they cut this feature to make the game even more simple to understand, but consider that in other games of the genre you have 
have at least 4 party members to manage, and here is just 2. Removing this was clearly a mistake, since this mechanic will help make the combat a lot more engaging than it currently is. The second missing addition is leveling up. In this game you don't actually get experience when defeating enemies. Yay, now I can enjoy combat even more. But the closest you get is getting hammer scraps. When you gather enough of this, the amount of ink your hammer can hold is increased. This feels great since like I mentioned, ink is used often while you color the world or on something as basic as attacking. But not getting something out of combat other than a few gold coins is not very rewarding. And I think the option to choose between HP, MP and BP when leveling up like in previous games was a great mechanic that made the player involved in the process. They should definitely return the leveling up system, and I wouldn't mind if they add a fourth option to choose from like ink or any other similar resource they may come up with. Lastly, I mentioned you could choose BP when leveling up, well that stands for batch points. In previous games, you would gather badges during your adventures which increase your stats or provided you with new skills, but you couldn't just equip all badges you found at the same time. Each batch required a set amount of batch points to be used, so you had to choose how you want to spend your points. And if you wanted more points, then you would have to choose the BP option when leveling up. This system is great, it's similar to a regular equipment option for each character of a party in other games of the genre, but it's simplified and more unique. Once again, this sounds like something that was removed for the sake of making the game easier to understand, but I think this mechanic was simple enough on its inception. And you don't have to shower the player with badges or PP from the start, you can introduce it slowly after they have mastered other more basic concepts. This is solely missed, since it adds depth to the combat and increases the feeling of progression and getting stronger that's clearly not as present as it should on this title. And that's it. Now don't get me wrong, I understand why some people like this game, especially if you like a more streamlined approach or if you didn't play the previous entries, but I think there is clearly a lot of improvements that could be done to a sequel, while still retaining what this game got right, like art style, music and humor. But if you like Super Paper Mario, then I'm sorry, we just can't be friends. It's not you, it's me. Wait no, it's totally just you. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have a chance then please subscribe. See you next time.